Hey guys, today we are going to check out three ways to increase the hard drive storage capacity on a Reolink NVR, depending on which model you have. So in today's video, we're going to touch on why you'd want to add more space to the NVR, and then the three ways to do so. First off, you might want to add more additional hard drive room if you're running out of space too quickly and you want to keep a longer rolling timeline of your footage. As you may know, once the disc in the NVR is full, it'll start replacing the oldest footage with the newer. This timeline will obviously be shorter, the more cameras you have, and the higher their resolution. Secondly, you might want to upgrade the included internal hard drive with one of better and or higher capacity. Mine came with a decent 2TB Toshiba drive, which is okay, but kind of small. I'm going to show you how to swap that out with a larger and quieter Western Digital Purple drive. These are designed for 24-hour writing, high heat, and high vibration. And lastly, you might want to replace the hard drive that's included because it's currently having issues. I'll show you how to do that as well. Up next, we're going to demo three methods to add storage and discuss how much storage we can actually add. I'm going to show you the proper methods and a couple of methods that are a little bit hacky. So, Reolink has three NVR models that we're going to touch on today. They have an eight-channel model, 16 and 36. Now before proceeding make sure to manually check if your NVR has the latest firmware. I'll add links in the description if you need some help on that. So the first method that we're going to look at to expand the capacity and the easiest will be to add an external hard drive like this one here. This is a 2 terabyte phantom drive and it costs about 115 US and it's just under 130 for the 4 terabyte model. Links for the drive will be in the description below. Now it's important to note that the hard drive must be powered and an eSATA connection is required. Now just to clarify, a USB external hard drive cannot be used. Okay, so before we connect it, here's where it gets a little bit confusing. Over the years, Reolink has released multiple updates of each NVR. The RLN8410, for example, has about six versions indicated by hardware numbers. The NVR's hardware version dictates the maximum capacity of the eSATA drive. The hardware version can be found in the Reolink app under device info. On the Reolink site, the hardware number is found on the specifications tab for the latest model. And below that, we can see the maximum capacity. For older models, this information is all available online and I'll add a link in case you need to look that up. And now for the 16 channel NVRs. The one with the hardware number H3MB02 supports an eSATA drive up to 4 terabytes. Some users have reported success with even larger drives. The newer 16 channel NVRs don't have an eSATA port and neither does the 36 channel NVR. I think that's because eSATA is older technology and internal hard drives are a much cheaper alternative. So let's get that drive plugged in to the NVR and get it booted up. Now we'll start off here by right clicking and going to settings. And now here we have storage on the left. The NVR's operating system recognizes it, but it needs to be mounted and formatted before we can use it. To do this, click on the format link, confirm, and perfect. Format succeeded. When the screen refreshes, you can see the free space on the new drive. This doesn't impact any previous data on the internal drive, and I can still go back and review the old footage from my Rio Link Duo 3 from a few days ago. Make sure to check out my detailed review on that 8K camera. It's pretty cool. Now the NVR will start using the eSATA drive as soon as there's no more space available on the internal drive. I've actually added a few more cameras here to speed things along so I can fill that disk up even faster. Okay, so here we are a few days later and I have zero free space on the internal drive and we are working through the eSATA drive. I can confirm that because the eSATA drive is quite active. And here's a quick fun fact. If you plug in the eSATA drive into a computer, the device doesn't show in Windows Explorer, so we can't see the files directly on it. You would need to export the footage to see that. Oh yeah, and I got a second fun fact for you. If the internal drive has failed or is unplugged and no longer usable, you can simply plug in an eSATA drive and use that. No internal drive is required. Oh, and there's another fun fact. This one's a bit of a hack. If you're using a USB powered eSATA to SATA cable, it doesn't provide enough electricity to power a mechanical drive. On the other hand, I can use that cable 
to connect it to an SSD and the NVR now can provide enough power through the USB port to power the drive. All right, so moving on, let's talk about our second method to increase the storage capacity of the Reolink NVR. We are going to swap out the internal hard drive with something a little bigger. You can also do this if the drive has malfunctioned. This method is also a little complex because certain NVR hardware numbers have different maximum capacities. To find out the limits, look up the model on the Reolink site and check out its specs. You could also see Reolink's post here on hard drive limits for all the NVRs it offers. I'll include that link in the description as well. That said, some users have reported no issues exceeding these limits. In my example, I'm going to install a four terabyte Western Digital Purple drive. I'm gonna add that link in the description as well. There's gonna be a lot of links in the description. So first off, we're gonna remove the screws on each side of the NVR and the one on the back, and then we'll slide the cover off. And here we have the hard drive and it's attached to the case from the bottom. Flip it over and loosen those four screws. Now remove the little twist die and slide out the drive. And I'm gonna move those four screws over to the new drive. Next, pop off the two connections from the old drive and put them on the new drive. They will only go on one way. The screws will slide into place and flip the unit over to tighten them up. And lastly, put the cover back on and reattach it. And back in the NVR's operating system, we now need to mount and format the drive. And this is the exact same as before. Go to settings and click on the format link. Cool, format was successful. The cameras are already set up to record automatically, so no further action is required. It's as simple as that. Now a third method to increase the NVR storage capacity is to add another internal hard drive. But no surprise, some NVRs have exceptions to this rule. The 8 channel NVR taps out at one internal drive, the 16 at two, and the 36 at three. Adding additional drives is very similar to replacing a drive. Open the cover, and connect the cables to the new hard drive and secure the drive in the case. You need to jump into the operating system and then format the drive and that's it. So I didn't like the fact that my 8 channel NVR only allows one internal hard drive. So here's a little hack to get around that. If I remove the power to the internal hard drive, I can add a power splitter and then split the power to another hard drive. Since the eSATA port to the motherboard is actually a SATA connector on the other end, I can plug that directly into the hard drive. So now that we have the secondary hard drive plugged in, we're all set. Well, kind of. The drive isn't secured to the case, so you're going to need to be a little bit creative here, maybe feed the wires out the back, and then secure the drive on top of the unit on a piece of rubber or a piece of foam. All right guys, so that wraps up my three methods to increase hard drive space on the Reolink NVR. I hope that you found this information helpful. If so, give me a thumbs up. As mentioned, the links for everything seen here today are in the description below. Also, please show me your support and help my channel grow by subscribing. It's free and that way you won't miss out on any future upcoming home tech DIY projects you can do yourself. Thanks for watching.